how many of you are memorizing the Word of God? Can you please raise your hand? That's wonderful. And uh, how many of you want your children to memorize the Word of God? See, everybody lifted up their hands. But for my first question, only few people lifted up. And I believe when you are a child, you yourself memorize the Word of God. But after some time when we are grown up, we forgot to memorize the Word of God. As a parent, it is your responsibility to keep God's Word right in your heart. When you keep God's Word in your heart, then you can teach your child to memorize the God's Word. And my dad, Pastor Gali, is with me and he got delivered from demons by memorizing the Word of God and he will share his testimony in a moment. But not only he taught us to memorize the scripture, but he himself memorized the scripture. And I'm not happy with a lot of his decisions and I tell this wherever I go. Because you know, when I was a child, if I need to buy a car or a toy, he always used to tell me, you must memorize the scripture to get that. The reason I was able to memorize all the verses that he asked me to do is because he himself was memorizing the word of God. Praise the Lord. If he would not have memorized the word of God, or if I would not have seen him memorizing the Word of God, I would not have memorized the Word of God. But because I saw an exemplar life in front of me, he memorizing the scripture, he reciting the scripture every day, that motivated me to memorize the Word of God. And by the grace of God, recently I completed memorizing the whole book of Revelation. So unless as parents we inspire our children to memorize the word of God, I don't think kids will take it. Don't think if you have more money that is the successful life. Don't think if you have a big house that is the successful life. Don't think if your children have one of the best jobs that is successful life. No, that's not the successful life. According to the Bible, the successful life is a person who will not be drowned in the desires of the flesh and the desires of the world so the word of god helps us to live for jesus christ so the three things keep god's word in your heart to live and the second thing use god's word to win the temptations we are told in ephesians 6 17 the sword of the spirit is the word of god so we need the word of god in our battlefield and the third thing is meditate on God's word day and night to have a successful life. So today my topic is Pastor Joe has asked me to share on memorize scripture as a family. And I believe this is the most important topic in the church today. And I have seen in many countries as I traveled, irrespective of any denomination, almost every church has a culture that they teach to memorize God's word in the Sunday school. And I'm sure that in the Ark Baptist Church or in any other church that you go to, Definitely the children in the Sunday school are asked to memorize at least a single verse in a week. Almost in India, every church do this. And before I go further, I want to ask a question. How many of you are memorizing the Word of God? Can you please raise your hand? That's wonderful. And uh, how many of you want your children to memorize the Word of God? 
See, everybody lifted up their hands. But for my first question, only few people lifted up. You are so conscious to teach your children to memorize the word of God. From here, I'm asking all the churches in America. And I believe when you are a child, you yourself memorize the word of God. But how come when you have grown older, why did you stop that? And I believe somewhere the devil has blinded the eyes of the believers. We, we are so mean to help our children to memorize the word of God. But after some time when we are grown up, we forgot to memorize the word of God. But Jesus clearly said in Matthew chapter 18 verse 3, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is giving a very clear statement that unless you become a little child, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. What is the good quality that we are seeing in a child's life in the church? They are memorizing the scripture. They are hiding God's word in their hearts. That is one of the best qualities that we can ever see in a child in a church. But when we grow older, we are thinking that we know everything or somehow the devil is deceiving us not to memorize the scripture. But Jesus is telling, no matter how tall you grow, no matter how big you grow, no matter what position or which position you get in the church, no matter if you become a pastor, or no matter if you become an evangelist, no matter if you become a prophet, no matter what you become, you must be a little child to enter into the kingdom of God. But as we grow older, we are thinking that I don't have to memorize the word of God because I'm grown. Because now I don't have to go to the Sunday school. Now I am a church member. Now I'm a church elder. Now I'm a church secretary. Now I am a church treasurer. Now I have a position. Now I don't need to memorize the word of God. See how the devil is deceiving a believer. Jesus is telling here, no matter how tall you are, no matter how big you are, no matter which position you have in this world, unless you become a little child, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. If we have to be a little child, we have to memorize the word of God. I am a child to my father. Yes, there was a time that he could hold me in his hands. But now I have grown more taller than him. So does it mean that I am his grandfather now? No. No matter how tall I become, no matter how big I become, even more than him, I am still his child. So Jesus is telling here, we must be like a little child. As we desire our little children to memorize the word of God, I want you to think for a moment like we are as a little child in front of Jesus and our desire also must be to memorize the word of God. We need the word of God in our lives. And we are familiar with Deuteronomy Chapter 6, verse 7, and where the word of God says, And those shall teach them diligently unto thy children, and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou layest down, and when thou risest up. So this is a message from God to the fathers and the mothers, to the parents. As parents, we always wanted to do this. We always wanted to teach our children to memorize God's word. We always wanted to teach our children the importance of God's word in their lives. But before to that verse, 
God said in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 6, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. We are forgetting that. But we are trying to emphasize the verse next to this important verse. As a parent, as a father, as a mother, God is commanding us to keep his word in our hearts. We are forgetting the first part and we are trying to implement the second part so we can teach our children the importance of the word of God or to memorize the word of God. Isn't it so funny? When we are missing the important part and trying to do the secondary part. Of course we are called to teach our children diligently the word of God. But before that as a parents we have to keep God's word in our hearts. That's the important thing. So as a family we have to memorize the word of God. Just don't think that it is your responsibility is uh, to help your child to memorize the word of God. It is a part of the responsibility, but the most important responsibility is as a parent, it is your responsibility to keep God's word right in your heart. When you keep God's word in your heart, then you can teach your child to memorize the God's word and my dad pastor Gali is with me and he got delivered from demons by memorizing the word of God and he will share his testimony in a moment but not only he taught us to memorize the scripture but he himself memorized the scripture and I'm not happy with a lot of his decisions and I tell this wherever I go because you know when I was a child if I need to buy a car or a toy he always used to tell me you must memorize the scripture to get that <laughs> and I wanted to ride a bicycle and I asked him dad my friends are now riding bicycle and I need it and he told me unless you memorize 500 scriptures I'm not going to buy you a bicycle <laughs> And yes, that made me angry, I'm sure. And then when I became 18 years old, and I wanted to ride a bike, and I asked him, a bike, but he told me, unless you memorize thousand verses, I'm not going to buy you a bike. Yes, that hurt me. I was offended. But the reason I was able to listen to him. The reason I was able to memorize all the verses that he asked me to do is because he himself was memorizing the word of God. Praise the Lord. If he would not have memorized the word of God or if I would not have seen him memorizing the word of God, I would not have memorized the word of God. I would have told him, who wants your bike? Who wants your bicycle? I don't want to memorize the word of God but because I saw an example of life in front of me he memorizing the scripture he reciting the scripture every day that motivated me to memorize the word of God and by the grace of God recently I completed memorizing the whole book of Revelation so unless as parents we inspire our children to memorize the word of God, I don't think kids will take it. Some of you have met my kids last year. Pastor Joe and his church and his members were so generous to host us for a couple of weeks. And I did same with my kids. If they ask me something, I tell them they have to memorize these scriptures. And I'm sure they might be offended. And they will share what I shared maybe after 10, 15 years. But I'm sure that they saw me memorizing the scripture, meditating the scripture. And I believe that motivated them to memorize the scriptures. My son Israel, who is uh, 16 years old, he has already memorized about 500 scriptures by the grace of God. And my daughter Jessica also memorized 500. And my son Joseph, who is the youngest, he memorized 100 scriptures. So we teach our children to memorize the word of God because we ourselves memorize the word of God. 
In India, we have a dowry system. The female family will give the male family certain amount. So when I was uh, marrying my wife, I asked a dowry from my wife. And I told, I need something from you to become my wife. And what I told her was, I need you to memorize 1,000 scriptures to become <laughs> my wife. And she really wanted to marry me soon. So what she did was, she immediately memorized a couple of hundred verses and proved that she will memorize the remaining 800 right after the marriage. So she memorized now 1,000 verses. So as a family, we have to memorize the Word of God. And I want to remind this scripture, we know John 3.16, for God so loved the world. And I also want you to remind Colossians 3.16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in us richly in all wisdom. So the Old Testament we saw in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 6, God is commanding the people of Israel to keep his words in our hearts. And here Paul is writing to the churches that we have to keep God's word Christ's word in our hearts richly in all wisdom okay I would like to share the three major benefits of memorizing the Word of God and the first one is memorizing the Word of God helps us to live a holy life remember we are separated from this world so we have to be holy as God is holy. We know that God told to people of Israel in the Old Testament many times as they were traveling, I am holy, so you must be holy. That was reminded even in the New Testament, Peter in 1 Peter uh, chapter 1 verses 15 and 16, here he says, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. There is no way we can enter into the holies of the holies because of our unholiness. That's the reason God sent his holy son into this world to shed his holy blood on the cross of Calvary. And he lived a holy life to show us as an example how even in the flesh we can live a holy life. Our God is holy, and the Word of God is holy, and the Holy Spirit is holy. So we have to be holy. When God saved us, we were like this. I wanted to use the practical teaching now. So this is our life. So when God saved us, we are like this. He washed us from every sin. His blood has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. But because we live in flesh, because we live in this world, sometimes we defile ourselves. And I have here three kinds of syrups which I borrowed from the kitchen of the church. And this syrup resembles lies in our lives. We are saved now. God's grace has now made us holy and Christ's blood has washed us from our sins. But because we live in flesh and in this world, we sometimes lie. So what happens is when we lie, we defile ourselves. So the color has changed. And I wanted to tell you something. Whatever the Christ has asked us to do, the world always says to do exact opposite. 
Now we are washed in the blood of Christ, so the Bible tells us we should not lie. But in this world, people say if you lie, it's not a sin. And I heard that there are some white lies which are approved by many people in this world. So I was told a white lie is a lie that is considered harmless. So many people say lies. In India, we have a saying, arrange a marriage even by saying a thousand lies. So tell the girl he's very beautiful. Tell uh, the boy that the girl is the most beautiful girl in the world I have ever seen. It's a lie. But you know, you can lie because you know, you want that marriage to be happened. And you can, you can tell the girl that this is the boy that had the most education in our city. You can tell that lie because you want that marriage to be happened. You can lie, this boy has the most property in this city because you want that marriage to be happened. But what does the Bible say? The Bible clearly says in Proverbs 12, 22 that lying lips are abomination to the Lord because we did something which God hates we defiled ourselves and even in the book of Revelation we see that liars will take part in the lake of fire and brimstone and uh, the second example that I wanted to tell you is I have a red syrup here and this resembles the anger oh who said anger is a sin because many people think that anger is not a sin Christ saved us we became holy but because we are in flesh we do certain things which God's word does not approve, which God does not love. So we defile our spirit, we defile our lives. And uh, the world says anger is a normal and healthy human emotion that can be a useful signal of other emotions like hurt, fear, or disappointment. But Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 verses 22 to 24 if you hate your brother without a cause you are committing sin you are committing murder so what Jesus said here was if you are offering anything to me if you are praying or if you are worshiping or if you are giving me some money as an offering I want you to think before you offer that if you feel you have offended your brother or if you are hating your brother by any means I want you to stop offering your prayer your worship your offering first go back to your friend or your brother and first be reconciled to him and then come and offer thy gift. We see how important God's word is because Jesus is clearly telling if you have anger or if you have hatredness towards your brother, stop doing what you are doing. So because of those emotions sinful emotions we defile ourselves and the third thing which I have is uh, a black color soup base and uh, I wanted to compare this with lust, porn and adultery because we are in the flesh and we are living in this world Sometimes we defile ourselves. Yeah, watching porn is sin. When we do that, we grieve the Spirit of God. 
and God is not happy about that. And when we commit adultery, God is not happy about it either. And recently in India, the Supreme Court told that adultery is not criminal offense. I don't know the rule or the law in America. I assume that it will be the same. The world says, the court says, committing adultery is not offensive crime. But Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount, you need not to commit adultery with a woman, but if you have a lustful thought towards her, you have committed adultery already with her. Why watching pornography is a sin? Because you know, when you watch, you commit adultery with that person. So because we are in the flesh, we defile ourselves. No matter how long we pray, no matter how many weeks we come to the church, we will be defiled by these things. We will be defiled by our emotions, by our thoughts, and by our doings. Do you know why God gave us his word to us? And I believe the only reason God has given his word to us, God knows because we are in the flesh and we are in the world, we defile ourselves. So God has given us by his grace, his word, hallelujah. What this word of God does is, the reason why we have to memorize the scripture, why we need to meditate the scripture is, the scripture has to go into our hearts, into our defiled hearts, I should say. So when the word of God goes into our hearts, the more word of God goes into our hearts, the clean we become. That's the reason Paul writes to the church in Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 4, Having therefore these promises dearly below, let us cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of flesh and spirit. God knows that we will be defiled with certain things because we are in the flesh. And that's the reason God has given us his word to cleanse us, to make us clean. That was even more explained in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 25 to 27. Christ loved the church. He loved the church. So what did he do? He gave himself for it. Why did he give himself for the church? That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Hallelujah. The word of God has power to cleanse us. As we take bath every day, we have to take bath with the word of God for our spirit. Because we are being defiled with many things. So, Jesus told us that we are the light of the world. So Jesus wants us to be like this, but many times we are like this to the world, black color. So that's the reason people are not able to see Christ in us. But if we memorize the scripture, and if we meditate on it, and if we cleanse the filthiness of our flesh and spirit with the word of God, and if we wash with the water by the word, we are cleansed every day. So don't think that we only need one cleansing. Yes, we need the basic cleansing with the blood of Christ at the beginning of our salvation. That was our first step when we asked Christ to forgive our sins. He did forgive us and he made us clean and he sanctified us. But because we are now in the flesh and in this world, we are defiled with many other things. But God has given his word to us. That's the reason God has inspired people to write his word. 
That's the reason the Holy Spirit inspired God's people to write his word. And even till today that word of God is available to us. Because we need it to cleanse ourselves. So the more word of God we put in our hearts, the more we will be cleansed. Some people memorize only one verse. So what happens? You have defiled too much and that one scripture is not sufficient. Yesterday in the afternoon, I was given only one pizza and I was still hungry. So I went and asked another pizza and they told, yeah, you can have even more pizzas because my stomach need more pizzas. <laughs> so in the same way, because you have defiled yourselves more, you need the more word of God. And the word of God is like a living waters and it will never end. Hallelujah. It is a living water. It will, it will have no end. It is always quite sufficient. So that word of God is needed to cleanse the filthiness of our flesh and spirit. The major first benefit by memorizing the word of God is we will be cleansed every day. We will be made holy every day. And the second uh, important uh, or the major benefit that we get from memorizing the word of God is when we memorize the word of God, we resist the temptations. Don't think, now I am grown up, the devil will not tempt me. Jesus was tempted. Devil always uses the word of God to tempt believers. He uses the word of God. So I have a practical example here. Let's assume that this is a temptation that devil has brought. So many times we are so much attracted to it. So we always fall into the temptation because we are we are being deceived. The question is why we are being deceived? Why God allows devil to tempt us? This is one of the major questions that every Christian has. Many people ask me why will God allow certain things in my life knowing that I fail in those things. God allows certain temptations. God allows devil to tempt you because he wants you to know that you don't have the word of God. The reason why you fall into temptation is you don't have the word of God. We have seen that in the yesterday's family session why the Eve is deceived. She never used God's word. And why Jesus is able to overcome the temptations that devil has brought to him? Because he has the word of God. So when you have the word of God, what happens is you will resist the temptations of devil. So you must have the word of God. If you don't have the word of God, you are attracted to it. So we all know that magnet has two poles. And uh, when the two poles are equal, they will repel each other. Let's say that North Pole is the word of God. And devil always has that North Pole, the word of God. So when he wants to tempt you, he comes with the word of God. And the South Pole is a life that does not have the word of God. The blue color resembles the worldly life, the flesh. So when you don't have the word of God, what happens is they both attract to each other. Because the devil has the word of God and you don't have the word of God. So because you don't have the word of God, you are easily attracted. But if you have the word of God, the red one, in the second example we see the red one 
The devil has the word of God. And if you have the word of God, if you have that North Pole, if you are towards that North Pole, automatically, you know, it will repel. So to have a victorious life over the temptations, you should have the word of God. Because the devil has the word of God and you must have the word of God. Because he always uses the word of God to tempt you. So when the devil has the word of God, you have to take it as a challenge that yeah, even I must have the word of God. Because without word of God, there is no way that you can defeat the devil. Without the word of God, there is no way that you can overcome the temptation. Devil always tells lies. See, if we go to the first temptation, the devil's lie was, man lives alone by that which goes into his mouth. That was a lie. If you don't have the word of God, you will be deceived because Jesus himself had the word of God because Jesus himself the word has the word in him he told to the devil no God's truth is man does not live alone by that which goes into his mouth but that which comes out of God's mouth so use the word of God in your temptation and the second lie that devil told from uh, Matthew 4, 5 to 7, angels lift you up in their hands when you jump off from pinnacle of the temple. Do you think only angels hold us when we climb the temple? Do you think the angels will not hold us when we come to the church? No, God is always holding us in his hand. So why would Jesus jump from the pinnacle of the temple? Jesus knows that he's already in the hands of God. But devil always tempts us, try this and know that God is with you. What happened to your promise? Because your promise did not come to pass, test God. If God has really given that promise, now test him. No, God has already given that promise and he already started to fulfill it you might not be seeing it. God is already holding you in his hands. And there's a reason Jesus said in John 10, 28, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. We are in God's hand, but still they will tempt us to jump out from God's hand. That's the plan of the devil. You are already in the hands of God, but devil uses a scripture to tempt you to jump out of God's hand. That is a big lie. God's truth is we are always in the God's hand. How do we know that? Because we know the scripture. How do we use the scripture? Because we have God's word in our heart. So if you are easily falling in temptation, if your kids are easily being trapped with the temptations of the devil you must memorize the word of god that's the one of the major benefits if you memorize the word of god you will resist the temptations of devil and the third temptation which devil used was the devil's lie worship me and i will give you all things this is how most of the time devil tempts us and our children. Because we believe in Jesus, who can do all things, to whom nothing is impossible. Let me ask this, let me ask that. Let me have desire for that luxury car or sports car or for that big mansion. Because my God is capable, so I can ask anything because he's able to do anything. That is a devil's lie. Here the devil is using the same lie with Jesus. He's telling, if you worship me, I will give you everything. What does the Bible say? Bible says, God gives us what we need, not we want. No matter how long you pray, no matter how many days you fast, no matter 
how many prophets prophesy over you god will not do what he does not want to do in your life so god only gives what we need in our lives so we have to worship god and jesus said on the sermon on the mount what you need i know before even you ask me so what you should do seek ye first my righteousness and my kingdom and everything will be added unto you so don't believe in the lies of the devil and don't be disconnected from god if you want to connect with god always every time in every situation you need the word of god so when devil tempts use the word of god and uh, you will overcome the temptation and the third thing the major benefit that we get by memorizing the word of god is joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says memorizing the word of god helps us to have a successful life this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success how many of you want to have a successful life can you please raise your hands so that i can see we all want to be successful and we want our children to be successful in whatever they do in their education or in their marriage or in their business or in their job work wherever we are we always want to be successful here the lord is telling to the people of israel if you want to be successful you have to meditate god's word day and night how can we meditate god's word day and night and yesterday in one of the sessions we saw the screen time about screen time and many people are addicted to screens and as long as you see the screen you will not get sleep but if you take bible and read it immediately you will get sleep <laughs> so here to be successful god is telling you need to meditate day and night so it is impossible to meditate god's word in night by opening your bible or by switching on to your app in your mobile or in your tablet or in your computer because when you try to open the bible you will get sleep when you close your game and when you open bible app automatically you will get sleep or when you open the computer to read the bible you will automatically get sleep or you will be distracted in reading or meditating the word of god so why should we memorize the word of god because if we have god's word in our hearts we will meditate on it not only on the daytime even when you lie down that's what god told to the people of israel you teach diligently to your children that when they lie us down that they should taught the word of god so because you have the word of god in your heart you can meditate god's word day and night we are coming to the church we are praying we are worshiping god but still why we are not successful because we are only meditating god in the daytime not in the night time because we don't have god's word in our heart so if you have you can lie down and you can you can remember the scriptures you can recite them and you can meditate on them and if you can go to sleep while you meditate the word of god and i believe you will see the visions of god hallelujah and many people say today i went to church today i prayed today i read the bible but why did i get that that terrific dream i was so upright because you need to meditate 
God's word before you go to bed. And I'm sure there are a lot of verses in the Psalms where David said he meditated God's word on his bed in the middle of the night, early morning. So the third benefit is when we have God's word in our hearts, we will have a successful life. So this water resembles the desires of the flesh and the desires of the world. I have a coin here and this is a, a quarter dollar of America. So let's see. It has a name on it, God in God we trust. But still it drowned. <laughs> Don't think because I have a Christian name I can go to the heaven. No, this coin is from America, made in America, <laughs> written in God we trust, and it was synced. And now I have an Indian coin. Let's see if this coin has any special ability to float. So this is Indian coin. It doesn't have in God we trust. <laughs> so now I put this coin and what happened? It drowned. So no matter how good we appear outward, no matter if we have a Christian name, no matter if we do Christian activities, we still drown in the desires of the flesh and in the desires of the world. But what we need in this world to get to the other side, we need the Word of God. And I wanted to use this, we call it thermocol. So I wanted to compare this thermocol with the Word of God. Why we need God's Word in our hearts? So now what happened? Is the coin now drowned? No. Why? Because it is holding to something which can float in the water. So because we have God's word in our hearts, we will never be drowned in the desires of this world or in the desires of the flesh. Yes, sometimes we may, sometimes we may feel like we are drowning, but the word of God always lifts us. Hallelujah. See, the coin is here and I'm trying to drown it, but even then it is coming up. Because God's word has that capacity. The science tells us a piece of thermocol floats on water due to its lower density compared to water. So the reason why the coin is floating which drowned before is because it is holding to something which is light than the water. In Matthew 11:30, Jesus said, my yoke is not heavy. My burden is light. And in more detail, John, when he is writing his first letter, he told in 5th chapter verse 3, God's commandments are not burdensome. They are not heavy. Sometimes when we read Bible, we feel they are very heavy, very hard to do, very hard to follow, very hard to memorize because I have very less memory, so I cannot memorize. It is very hard. No, that is a lie. The word of God is very light because the word of God, which was with God, has come into this world in a flesh to save us. So because now Christ came into this world, now the word of God is made very easy for us. They are not heavy. Whatever the word of God asks us to do, the same word of God helps us to do what it asks us to do. So that's the reason now 
even though we are in the flesh, even though we are in this world, we can float in this world victoriously. When we can float like this, when we will not be drowned, and that is the successful life. Hallelujah. Don't think if you have more money, that is the successful life. Don't think if you have a big house, that is the successful life. Don't think if your children have one of the best jobs, that is successful life. No, that's not the successful life. According to the Bible, the successful life is a person who will not be drowned in the desires of the flesh and in the desires of the world. So the word of God helps us to float in this world. The devil always tries to drown us but the word of God always lifts up to float in this world to live for Jesus Christ so the three things keep God's word in your heart to live and the second thing use God's word to win the temptations we are told in Ephesians 6 17 the sword of the spirit is the word of God. So we need the word of God in our battlefield. And the third thing is meditate on God's word day and night to have a successful life.